Chapter 32 Desmond walked to the sun glimmering in her eyes. Pulling herself up to a seated position, she looked around at her surroundings. She had been lying on a rough but comfortable bed in a wooden cottage. Smoke filled the house from the hearth where Mariella used a wooden paddle to stir something in a cauldron. Late start this morning, your highness, Mariella said over her shoulder. Late? Desmond gazed out of the window. The sun's barely risen. Mariella chuckled. It's late for us. We get up before the sun, except for Severin. He's a bit of a late sleeper if I don't drag him out of bed. Don't tell me he's a layabout. Desmond threw the bed coverings off of her, revealing the nightgown she had borrowed from Mariella last night. No, no, no. He works hard. He's diligent and determined, but... Mariella set her paddle down. He always has his head in the clouds and drives his father mad, but I love that part about him. I hope he never loses his ability to reach beyond his means. It's the reason I believe he was able to befriend the dragon. Severin told you the whole story, then? Yes, and you should get back to the castle before the night's right out. Mariella dried her hands on her dress while walking to a chest in the corner. Severin will escort you once he returns. Where is he? It's washing day. Mariella dove through her trunk. He and Timron are down by the river bathing. I've got clothes washing now. I'm afraid your dress won't be dry until tomorrow, so unfortunately, you won't be able to wear your royal robes as you travel through the market day. She smirked at Desmond over her shoulder. Is that what you were scheming last night? Desmond bounced on the bed. Don't scheme, princess. Mariella turned back to the trunk. We simply don't want you to leave the house wearing a filthy dress. Can anyone blame me for being hospitable? You are devious, Mariella. Desmond leaned forward in her seat. What shall I wear, then? I'll lend you one of my old dresses, if I can find it. Ah, here it is. Mariella pulled a green and white silk dress embroidered with silvery flowers. It shimmered in the light as she examined it all over. How oh, good, the moths haven't gone to it. Master Knighton's concoction worked. What a lovely dress. Mariella hung it over her arms. I've always liked it. Thank you, Mariella. Desmond hopped to her feet. You've been more than kind to me. I must caution you, princess. Don't spend too much time in the marketplace. Mariella caught her eye and held it, no matter how many times I'm turning around in my mind. I can't imagine the amount of nights needed to launch a campaign like facing a dragon being able to leave before midday. However, the urgency of the situation may cause them to prepare faster. You must get to the castle to stop them. Do not betray Tesco's trust. It's a terrible thing to betray the trust of a dragon. Of course, Desmond nodded. I would never. We have some time before the city opens for the day. I filled a basin in the corner with heated water so you can have a wash in privacy. Mariella handed her the dress. I'll find a way to return your dress to the castle when it's dry. Thank you. Desmond took the dress and walked toward the basin. Mariella, she turned to face her. How are you certain the knights won't leave until midday? Do you have experience dealing with knights? I... I have a bit. How do you know so much about them? And how do you know so much about dragons? I... Lafa isn't my original home. Mariella turned back to her cauldron full of washing clothes. It came from elsewhere. There. It's not important. Hurry now. You want as much time as possible in the market. Desmond let her eyes run over Mariella. Hanging the dress over a chair, she examined it as it shimmered in the light. Smooth fabric with white lace running at the hem. It wasn't the sort of dress a peasant farmer should have in her possession. So where did she get it? Desmond peeked at Mariella over her shoulder. She stood there, staring her washing with a certain grace Desmond had never seen in anyone before, be it peasant or noblewoman. Desmond narrowed her eyes in thought. There was certainly more to this farmer's wife than met the eye, but Desmond could not pinpoint what.